is a very food-oriented company. When I first started, I was very excited. I studied over and over again just to make sure that I nailed the material, know the ingredients, and honestly, just be yourself. Everything else will come as it is. Bartender standpoint, it's not just drinks, it's going to be food. You really have to know that menu inside and out, every detail. You really want to study this stuff well because it really makes the difference between you know an average experience and a great experience. I certainly get to know the guests, the clientele. We had a lot of NBs, Nota Bene's, who have been coming back for years on end, 5, 10, some of them 20 years. I never came from this kind of uh, food industry. I did more of like a chicken wings and beers type place. <laughs> so I mean, I learned how to I learned flavors back then, but learning more intricate menu. Um, I studied it. I asked lots of questions. I looked food up because I didn't know what some of the items were, um, and obviously being able to deliver what that item is if somebody asks. It's just like learning it. Took like three items at a time, like three menu items. Learned them, and then I went and got all the menu memorized by I think two weeks. It was. I started off as a cook, but I just recently moved to the front of house. And I've realized the importance of learning the menu because now I have to explain the dishes to our guests in a different way. When I learned the ingredients as a mise en place list, now I have to be more descriptive and romanticize the words because our food is so chef inspired. Our chef special today, we have a Munich kind of breakfast. It is our house done uh, porchetta, which gets braised for 36 hours. Uh, that gets fried, goes on the plate with our house-made uh, kind of German sauerkraut. Uh, it also gets a fried spetzle, uh, which are German kind of dumplings, egg, egg dumplings uh, that are fried. Uh, it also gets the uh, honey mustard uh, kind of sauce, as well as two fried eggs. Today's main feature is the Munich breakfast. Two wonderfully roasted pieces of porchetta, a couple of fried eggs, house-made sauerkraut, beautifully fried spatula drizzled with a honey coarse mustard. As the host of Banning, I have to know the menu very well because you'd be surprised how many people I have calling in with general questions about the menu and our specials, dietary restrictions, and I don't always have the time to go grab a server or a manager or a chef. One of the tricks I used when I first started in the company was basically going right back to a root school idea of using cue cards. On one side of the cue card I would write the main sort of components of the dish, three of them, and then of course some glamour words on the other side, and of course on the flip side I would write the answer or basically the name of the dish. So a lot of the times I would reverse them flipping through either the name of the dish and then naming off the three components or I would do the three components and then know which dish it was. By becoming this familiar with the food in the restaurant, it made me so much easier to sort of actually be able to emotionally serve my guests where I could connect with them and not just be like humming and hawing about menu ingredients and thoughts along those lines. The company really tends to reward um, people who are trying to push themselves, always learn something new and don't just think about today, you know, think about tomorrow, a year, two years, five years down the road. Uh, if you really like this company and you really are willing to put in the work, then, you know, good things will come to you. Today I'm going to be talking about emotional service. The menu 
specs uh, and the allergy card, <clears throat> which we provide um, with orientation and with the first few days of training. Um, that is probably the biggest tool when it comes to learning the menu. Um, everything down to salt and pepper uh, is on there in terms of ingredients. Yes, at first it can be kind of hard to go up to a chef and tell him that something's missing on a dish that he created, but it's in your best interest. You know? Menu launch, we kind of go around the room, we ask staff what their favorite dish is, and then we ask them to describe it to their peers. And so by listening to other people describe their favorite dishes, um, you kind of uh, put things together and you learn how to describe them better yourself. So most people, if they have a severe allergy, they will inform us. For example, if it's a nut allergy, dairy, intolerance, um, they do inform us, but I always would ask any allergies that the kitchen should be made aware of, um, and even things people don't always consider, like amaretto is a nut-based liqueur. So people need to, um, if they say I'm not free and then they order a specialty coffee which has amaretto in it or Kahlua, one of those things, um, you definitely have to catch it and it's our job as front of house staff to really catch those things and make sure that the worst doesn't happen in those scenarios. Yeah. Food knowledge was the uh, most important tool for me to know uh, when it comes to emotional service. Um, I felt that it was uh, the, the more I knew about food, the easier it was for me to, to engage with my guests and uh, transition into being a better server than I am.